We all get worried about skin cancers, specifically melanomas, especially if you get a new changing mole on your body. Now, what about this lesion? Is this skin cancer or is this not? Well, in actual fact, this is a seborrheic keratosis and it is not a skin cancer. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about seborrheic keratosis, what it is and how to differentiate a seborrheic keratosis from a mole or skin cancer. For those who don't know me, my name is Chris and I am a dermatology trainee based in Glasgow in the UK. And on this channel, I share my life experience working in dermatology as well as my journey towards becoming a consultant dermatologist in the UK. So what are seborrheic keratosis? Now, these are common harmless overgrowth of dead skin cells due to factors such as aging and chronic sun exposure. They are very common in the UK, affecting around half of men and a third of women. We call them by different names from seborrheic keratosis, seborrheic warts, to basal cell papillomas and senile warts, but they essentially mean the same thing. Most importantly, they are not moles and do not turn into skin cancers. So this essentially means that they are completely harmless. However, they can sometimes become inflamed, uncomfortable, especially when they catch on clothing and can also bleed as a result. Now, we do see a lot of patients who have been referred to dermatology with query skin cancers, uh, specifically melanomas, when in actual fact, they are seborrheic keratosis. So how do you tell the difference? For one, seborrheic keratosis appears stuck on, which means that they sit on top of normal skin and gives the impression that they can be easily picked off. They can also appear greasy and sometimes can be black, brown in color, which can sometimes look a bit like melanomas. Now, if you happen to own a fancy looking instrument called a dermatoscope, you will be able to appreciate some of the key features of seborrheic keratosis. Number one, seborrheic keratosis have these things called comedo-like openings. Now, these are dead skin cells known as keratin and they appear as dark brown plaques of keratin on the surface. It is interesting to note that the fluid on the surface of the dermatoscope actually accumulates around the periphery of these comedo-like openings rather than the inside as compared to a mole. There are also these white shiny spots also known as media-like cysts and they are formed by keratin. Sometimes seborrheic keratosis give off this brain-like or cerebriform appearance because of ridges and fissures in the lesion. You may also get small, short capillaries or blood vessels known as hairpin vessels. But most importantly, in a seborrheic keratosis, it does not have a pigment network as seen in a mole or even in a melanoma. So what about a melanoma? When do we start thinking that a mole isn't a mole and that it might be something more sinister like melanoma? Well, I think the main important thing is if you've got a new mole that is changing, make sure you get yourself checked. In the British Association of Dermatologists website, there are lots of patient information leaflets on mole monitoring, seborrheic keratosis, even normal moles and skin cancers like melanomas. And what I've learned is this acronym that you can apply to your own moles as well. And the acronym is ABCDE. So A stands for asymmetry. And what I usually tell my patients is if you divide your mole or the lesion in half, the left should flip over to look similar to the right. B stands for border, so if you trace an outline of the mole, um, it should be round, regular. If there is any jagged edges or irregular in shape, then again, make sure you get your mole checked. C stands for color, so in melanomas, you get different shades of brown, even black and blue. So anything with two or more colors is something a little bit worrying. D stands for diameter and most melanomas are enlarging in size, so anything more than six millimeters. The last one is E, which stands for evolving or change. And as I've just said, if you have a mole that is new, that is changing, or even an old mole that has changed in color, shape, size, make sure you go to your GP who will then refer you to dermatology for us to have a look. As for seborrheic keratosis, because they are completely harmless, we don't treat them at all. Sometimes because they can get irritated, can bleed as a result, we may want to treat them with things like liquid nitrogen, also known as cryotherapy, where we freeze them off and after a few days, they should drop out. Sometimes if they are protruding a lot, uh, catching on clothes, making it very uncomfortable, we may also want to 
and consider shaving them off as well. There you have it, this is a short video on seborrheic keratosis and how to differentiate a seborrheic keratosis to a mole or skin cancer. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you would like to watch more videos on common skin conditions, please do check out my other videos as listed here. Thank you for watching once again. See you next time. Bye.